everyone, welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I have some colored pencils lying here, my 120 square brute fooners. You all know they are one of my favorite sets. And I've got a bunch of colored pencil charts laying here where I have swatched out my colored pencils. And I wanted to be able to bring a video to you and explain to you exactly why it is so important to always swatch your colored pencils. I did a very recent video titled My Top 5 Colored Pencil Tips for Beginners. And in that video, one of my top five tips was to always swatch your colored pencils. Now, in this video, I'm going to sort of expand on that and I'm going to give you all of the reasons why it's important as well as provide you with examples to back all of those reasons up, as I do with most of my videos. If you're interested in seeing this, stick around because there will be a lot of great information in this video. If you enjoy videos like this, please do make sure you subscribe and turn your bell notifications on so that you're always notified every time I post a new video. In the description box below, you will always find links for my Facebook group, my email list, as well as my Patreon for those of you that would like to support me over there. Let's go ahead and get into this video. Those of you that have been subscribed to me for some time and always watch my videos, you know that I have done lots of reviews on a lot of different budget-friendly colored pencils. And this set, the 120 Brute Fooner set, this is one of my favorites, and this is one of the ones that I highly recommend to all beginners that are just discovering this wonderful hobby and you want to start coloring if you just want to purchase one coloring book and one set of pencils. This is the set of pencils that I would recommend to start for everyone because they are just fabulous. I will always have links of everything that I suggest to you in the description box below to where you can find these things very easily. But as you know, when we are working with budget-friendly pencils, the color of the barrel of the pencil is going to be completely different than what is going to come out on your swatch sheet. And even when you look at the lead of the pencil, that color that you see on the lead, that's not necessarily what's going to go down on your coloring page. And this is why it is so important to swatch your colored pencil sets, especially when you are using budget-friendly pencil sets, because I really honestly don't know one budget-friendly set that matches up the color on the barrel to what comes out on the swatch sheet when you lay the color down on your paper. Now another situation I want to mention is we have wonderful pencil sets like this one. These are my Black Widows and as you can see they have a black barrel and a color dip tip. Now with these I can assure you that most all of them, let me pull one out and show you. So if I look at this one pencil, which is from the Monarch set, as you know, these Black Widow pencils, they come in a bunch of different sets and it makes it much easier for you to sort of just get started because you can just purchase the first three sets and be able to create beautiful coloring pages and then just add on as you could afford it. So this one's from the Monarch set, which was the most recent release and it came with a lot of beautiful pastel colors. But if you look really closely at the lead on that pencil, it looks way different than what the color dip tip looks like. If I were to take this color and swatch it out, this is a color that you could actually barely see. This is actually a beautiful highlight color. Let me see if I could zoom you in. It's a yellow type color, but when you swatch it, you really can't see it until you have other colors around it. But looking at this and looking at the tip of the pencil, you could see much more color in the tip of the pencil than you can see going down on this paper. And it surely does not match up to what the color dipped tip looks like. Now, if I'm looking at the Brute Fooner set, the 120 Brute Fooner set, and I grab this color, this is my 010. I have the swatch chart for these laying right here. So if I look over here and I find 010, it is right here. Now look at the difference in the color. Let me actually hold it a little bit closer so you can see. But if you look at this, you can see that the tip of the pencil 
is very different from what that 010 says the color would be once it's swatched out. And if you look at the barrel of the pencil, these two surely don't match up. The pencil or the barrel of the pencil is much darker than what you see comes out of the lead, as is the lead of the pencil when you look at it with your eye. So that is one reason why it is so important to swatch your colored pencils. If I were to lay this down and swatch it out on my paper, of course this is the Spring Hill paper, you all know that's the paper that I always use, and still I continue to get questions, what paper are you using? <laughs> but I'm usually always using the Spring Hill paper 80 pound, and I'll, I always have a uh, link in the description down below if you're interested in grabbing that paper. I know many of you have picked up that paper and you really love it. So if I look at this, and I lay it right next to it, you could see again that even swatching it out over here, it looks exactly the same as it does over here. So you can see that I, my color is not wrong on my swatch sheet. It is actually that color. But if I put the pencil next to it, the barrel is very different, as is the lead of the pencil. So that is one of the biggest reasons to always swatch your colored pencils. And I have a few other examples here. Let's go ahead and look at this, um, what number is this? 091 is what this one is. So let's find 091 on our swatch. Here is 091, let me pull that a little bit closer. That is what 091 looks like. And this is what the color looks like that you see on the lead if you were to just look at it. So when you lay your colored pencil down on your coloring page, it's not going to look like the lead of the pencil or the barrel of the pencil. It is very different from what you could see on that swatch chart. And again, I'll go ahead and swatch it over here just so you can see and know that my swatches are definitely in their right places. You can see that these colors match up and they are completely different than what you see in the pencil. And I will show you one more. I've got a blue one here, and this one is 038. So we are gonna come down on our swatch sheet, and we're gonna find 038. It is right here. Now look at the huge difference with that one. Let me zoom you in here a little bit more. But look at the difference. Look how much darker this is, and look what a beautiful, pale, pale color this 038 is. And if you're wondering about the names on this swatch chart, I actually have a video where I put all of these pencils in perfect color family order. I'll link that up in the upper right-hand corner. For those of you wondering about this swatch sheet, I did make this available to you in my Facebook group, as well as another swatch sheet that was provided to us by Yi Jing Yang, who is part of the coloring community and also in my Facebook group. She was kind enough to translate all of the Chinese names on these pencils. If you look at the pencil, let me see if this will zoom in, but you can see that it's got the Chinese name here as well as the number. And she was so kind as to translate all of those Chinese names into the English names, and that is also available in the file section in my Facebook group. So if you're not already in my Facebook group, you can check the description down below, and you could put in a request to join us. Another reason why it's so important to make sure you have all of your colored pencil sets swatched out is because it lays all of the colors right in front of you and you could see them so that you're able to put together the best possible color combinations. So if you're trying to create a monochromatic color combination, you could just go right to all of the colors that are shades of purple or all of the colors that are shades of blue. And if you're looking to mix colors together that are much different from one another, say you wanna mix some blues together with some of the shades up here in our yellows, and you want to be able to just use the yellows for that bright pop of highlight and really just sort of mix your colors up, you can do that too. Say I was over here looking at my greens, and you could see that there are so many different beautiful greens in this set 
but they all have undertones that are very different. So if I wanted to say make a monochromatic green color combination and I wanted the undertones to be the same, you would be able to tell by looking at your color chart just by looking at them in color family order. I was the one who put all of these together. I think I said that earlier in the video. So if you're looking for that video where I swatched all the colors out in perfect color family order, I will link that in the upper right hand corner. But when I swatch my colors out, I am, I do a whole lot of swatching and more swatching and more swatching. And I try to make sure the colors are in the exact places according to the undertones. So if you look here, you can tell some of these have much of the same undertones and they're just, they're all put in the right place as much as I was possibly able to do. So over here we have two greens that look very similar. They have similar undertones and it makes it just so much easier to put your colors together. If you wanted to make a color combination and you wanted to make it with some greens but add a pop of yellow, you can go up here and choose some of these greens and then you could look here at these yellows that have a little bit of green in them, like say this one here or this one here has quite a bit of green in it. And it just makes it so much easier to put your colors together. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you an example for that as well. So I chose three colors here that I thought would look really beautiful together. And I sort of went just kind of up like this, up my chart, and I decided to choose 010, which is called Watermelon Juice. That is this pencil that I had showed you earlier and we swatched out in the previous part of the video. And then I've got this 108, which is called Hibiscus Tea, which is a gorgeous color. And you could clearly tell by looking at this that that lead, again, does not match up to the color that you see here. Neither does the barrel. And then we've got 013, which is called Cheesecake. And I'm going to go ahead and use that one too. And I'm going to put these three colors together for you and show you that it just makes it so much easier to be able to look at this and choose your color combinations. I'm going to go ahead and lay down my darkest color and then I'm going to lay down my next color, my mid-tone. And you guys can also see how beautifully these pencils blend together. They are like an absolute dream. I love these pencils. And then our highlight color. And look how gorgeous these colors just so nicely blended together. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and make a whole ton of layers, but I just want you to be able to see that the blend and the transition of these pencils is just absolutely wonderful. And having my swatch sheet really helped me to be able to put these colors together and choose the best highlight color that I possibly could. But that is what those three colors look like together, and they look absolutely gorgeous together. Another great reason to always have your colored pencil sets swatched out is because it makes it so much easier to match your colored pencil choices for your coloring pages up to a color palette. Now, what I have here is Sarah Renee Clark's color catalog. I've showed this in numerous videos. I've showed you all how to use it. You can get color catalog one and color catalog two. So there are two of them. And there also are color, com uh, color companions that you can add on with your purchase. And if you purchase them all as a bundle, you will save a little bit of money. But the way that it works is you can browse by colors, keywords, or collections, as you can see here. So if I wanted to search by colors, I would just click on colors. It would give me a bunch of different colors. And say I wanted a, I don't know, what do I want? Okay, so say I wanted, let's stick with our reds. I'll pick magenta. And so it will take us right to the magenta color. So here's all of our color palettes for magenta. And I can zoom in and zoom out right from my phone. It comes in PDF form, but this is how I get all of my color palettes now. There are so many to choose from. I believe there are 250 
in the first volume, this is volume one, and then you get another 250 palettes in volume two, and they are all completely different. If you were to add on the color companions, then you would have every single swatch in every single color catalog, both one and two, and they would match up your pencil sets to each box on the color palette, which is really helpful for those of you that have trouble matching up your own colors to your palettes. But if you have all your colors swatched out, this also makes it much, much easier. So say I liked this color palette. I'm going to click, oh, that's a beautiful palette. Look at that. So say I wanted these colors. All I had to do to match up those colors is, let's pull this one aside since those are our greens and we are looking at pinks. So if I have my color palette right here, I can zoom in and zoom out like I said. And so I'm looking at this pink here. So if I wanted to get the closest to matching this up, I would be able to go right to my swatch chart and actually match that color up to whatever is closest. Now on every single pencil set, you're not necessarily going to have something that is going to match up exact, but you can choose what is the absolute closest. And I have several videos where I show you how to match up your pencils to your color palette. I will try to find one of those and link that up in the upper right hand corner because those videos are very, very helpful. But I usually choose three pencils to match up and make a combination using the one box on my color palette. And generally most color palettes will come with five. I believe they all come with five if you have the color catalogs. If you're searching on the internet and you're looking for color palettes, you can sometimes find other color palettes that include more colors than just five. If I'm looking at this part of the color palette, I zoomed it in really, really far so you could see the advantage you get here, but this really helps me to be able to look at the colors on my swatch chart and tell what color this is going to match up to. If I were making a color combination for this box on my color palette, I really like this color. I feel like it matches up really, really well. It's just much lighter, but it looks to me like it has or may have the same undertones. And then I could add some of these other colors in this area to that color, and I would be able to try to find what would be the closest match in whatever colored pencil set I'm using. This one doesn't necessarily have a color on here that matches up exact to that color, but I believe that this looks a lot like something like maybe the hot pink in your Prismacolor set. And then you would just go to the next color, you would zoom it in, and it looks like this color is right in this area here, and it looks like it's almost an exact match. Oh, look how my phone just kind of flipped around, but that made it even bigger. But you can tell that this is almost an exact match to this one or this one. It looks like it might actually be in between this 105 and the 110. So we are really, really close with this color. And then if I came over here to this color here, I know that I would go down to the purples. It looks like this color here is very close to these two colors here, or would be a very good in between. And then we've got another color here that is more of like a hot pink. And if I look over here, it looks like it may be very close to this color here. Look, it zoomed in even more. And that's one of the reasons why this color catalog, catalog is so great because look how close I could zoom these colors in. I could really, if I, I, that just, it automatically flipped my phone sideways, but it really brought those colors in. And so it makes it so much easier to just lay my phone here and match up these colors and choose the color that I thought was the closest match. But it looks very similar to this color here, which is the 061 Rogue, begonia and then we have this beautiful hot pink color and that one might be a little bit of a harder actually it's not it looks very close to this one here so I just took my color palette 
and I matched up all of the colors on my palette. If you wanted to be able to print these out, you could also do that as well. And if you look down here, it gives you a space to actually create a color combination right on the palette. So that is really, really great because you could put together three colors for that one color and lay them out and you could even number them here off to the side or even right on top of where you laid the color if you had a micron pen or something of that sort. Another reason why it's so important to swatch your colors is because it really, really helps if you're trying to color a page or you have an image on the page that you want to color. Say I have this butterfly here and I wanted to color this butterfly to look very much like something that is real. And I wanted to sort of use an image to pull all of those colors into my butterfly. So I have an image you'll see up here on the um, on the screen somewhere, you should see that now. But if I wanted to pull the colors from that gorgeous image and put them into this butterfly, it will make it so much easier if all of my colors are swatched out. Now, I know a lot of you are gonna ask, of course, this is my Maria Trolle. This is Maria Trolle's Nightfall. You all know this is my favorite coloring book. This page here is from a video I did on highlights and shading and shadows. It's actually my most popular video on my channel and probably has over 21,000 views now, I think. <laughs> and I will link that video in the upper right hand corner if you're interested in watching that. That was a really great video. And this page over here is a page I'm coloring with my 120 Brute Funer set. You could see they go down on the paper absolutely beautiful and the colors are gorgeous and vibrant. But this is for my question and answer series that I'm doing on my channel where I'm just sort of answering your questions and coloring and showing you color combinations at the same time. But I will be getting back to that and finishing up this page. And I will go ahead and link the series in the upper right hand corner if you're interested in finding that or watching that. I have quite a few videos where I show you exactly how to color from realism. So if I wanted to do that in this case, and I wanted to take this butterfly and just bring life to this butterfly using a real butterfly or an image of a real butterfly. All I had to do was look at that image and use my swatch chart here and just sort of match up the colors. So I would probably take the image and I would hold my pencils up to the image and I would sort of really try to match those colors up as much as I possibly could. Those really, really dark colors in there, I would probably try to see if those are more brown, if they have more of an eggplant color in them, or if they're closer to black. It's really kind of hard to tell unless you have the image like right up on your phone screen. And so that's another really great um, idea is to make sure you download the image that you're looking at and kind of zoom it in really, really close like I did with the color palette and use that image to just really match up your colored pencils. Now the benefit of having this on your phone is that if it's on your phone, you can actually zoom it in and so it makes it much easier to sort of match up your colors to your color swatch chart or the colors on your color swatch chart. So if I'm looking over here at these outer circular corners of the butterfly, I'm looking at my color swatch and I see a lot of this color here, which is 099. And then I see a little bit of this color here, which is 112. And I see a lot of that right here in this area. And then it looks like a lot of this is black, but if I were coloring this, I would probably use a very dark, dark blue. And I'm not sure that we have one of those in this set. Let me pull this here, but maybe not a dark, dark blue, maybe one of the dark, dark grays to be able to create this color here and copy it exactly, and then the colors that are all in here. Of course, when I was doing this, I would use a few different variations of grays so that I could just create a little bit of dimension right in that area. I would probably go ahead and pull my Prisma Color White for this right here, just to be able to make sure that that blended in really, really nicely, and pull it into the purples that I chose from my color swatch 
of my 120 brute funers. And then when we get over here to these parts of the wings, we've got a lot of really bright, vibrant orange colors. And if I am pulling this close enough to my swatch chart, I can see that I'm going to be right in this area here where we have this 008 color. It matches up really, really well. And then of course I would pull another few colors just to pull out some of the dimension that you see in this wing. So I would probably go here to this color called Orange Gummies. <laughs> Isn't that a great name? So I would probably blend in a little bit of this, use a little bit of this, and then maybe use some variants of these colors here that have the same undertones to really start to pull this together. And it just, I don't know, it just makes it so easy when you are coloring something from realism and you want to really pull these colors close to the image that you're coloring. So as you can see, having your colored pencil swatch chart just makes it so much easier to really be able to focus in on your image, pull it as close as you can to your colored pencil chart and see exactly what those colors are. Then you could take your swatch sheet where we swatched out a few of our colors. I always leave one of these out to the side so I could test my colors. But then you can use your image and your colored pencil swatch chart as well as your little scratch sheet here. And you could test out your pencils on this sheet to make sure that they're gonna come together as close as possible to the image before you lay them down on your coloring page. Now that I've given you quite a few reasons as to why it's very important to always swatch out your colored pencils, I want to show you exactly how I store mine. So on this one or this particular swatch sheet where I've got 120 colors but I don't have enough room on the one side. I like to do mine this way, and then when I put them together, I lay them like this, one to the front and one to the back, and then I take them and I use these clear covers. These can be purchased on Amazon, and I just slide them into these clear covers and it makes it very easy to be able to look at the look at the one side and then I just have to flip it around to see the other side and I've got all my colors saved into the one plastic binder and I do that with several of my swatch charts I've got another one here I know a lot of you are probably going to ask me where to get this these swatch charts, but this is the swatch chart that you get if you sign up for my email list. There's always a link down in the description box below. This is my Karen Dosh Neo Color, and this is how I have these as well. In my, this is actually on watercolor paper because these are water soluble, and I have them in the watercolor or on the watercolor paper all swatched out and they still fit very nicely into my little plastic here but I have others that are the same here is my colored pencil chart for my Crayolas and you can see that this one also did not have enough space so I have the rest of them continued onto the back and so when I put them inside the plastic chart, I just take my plastic chart or my plastic, my plastic cover, I meant to say, but I just put them inside the plastic cover just like this. And it just makes it so convenient. These are my Derwent Chroma Flow. Of course, there's not that many colors in this set, so they all fit on one side, but still they're in my little plastic cover. And then I have my pink binder here. Those of you that don't know, I love pink. It's my favorite color. <laughs> pink and a seafoam green are my favorite colors. And I love to have those colors in everything in my office or my art filming, art slash filming studio. But then I just take all of my swatch sheets and I just lay them all in my binder and of course this binder for me has a lot of work stuff in it because I do YouTube and 
I've got a whole lot of projects just kind of laying over here off to the side and some other things laid in here more to the back. But for the most part, this is all of my swatch sheets and it just makes it very convenient just to have them all like this in one place. And then when I flip, I'm gonna see the other colors on the other side. But generally I leave them in here until I'm ready to pull them out and they stay in my uh, bookcase behind a little closed door. So that is just a really convenient way for you to keep all of your swatch charts. I hope that this video was helpful to all of you and really gave you some really great ideas as to why it is always so important to make sure that you always swatch out your colored pencils onto colored pencil color charts. And if you do not have one, make sure you sign up for my email list and you will get one sent back to you for free in your email. And the one that, this one here, that I have all of my 120 Brute Fooner squared colored pencils on, this one is available in my Facebook group. And this one is great if you're trying to swatch out your Prisma colors or any other pencils that might have a number and a name on them because I made sure there was a space with a gray background just so those two things really stood out as well as the color. So if you're looking for this one, then you can just put a request in to join my Facebook group and go straight to the file section and download this. But I hope you all enjoyed this video and everything that you've seen in this video I will have linked in the description box down below as I always do. I hope you have a fabulous day. Happy coloring. Bye.